Hi, thanks for attending this webinar. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, if you have any questions about anything we talk about here, please call us uh, at any time. I'm Kevin Jones. I'm CEO of Ectobox, and we're an IoT solutions uh, company. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, more importantly, in this webinar, we will talk about machine downtime, how the data is important, uh, and what to do with that data. And lastly, and I think kind of the fun part is how to get that data. We've done any number of presentations on IoT over time. However, a, a number of people have asked us to show how some of the details work, some of the behind the scenes things work about how to actually pull the data out of a machine. So we have one example we'll go through, show a few screens about how that works. Uh, so we're happy to pull the covers back and show you some of those details. Uh, and we'll cover as much as we can in this short video. Uh, as far as us, again, uh, Ectobox, uh, we're an IoT solutions company that helps manufacturing companies improve their competitive position by pulling data from machines and devices and converting that data into valuable information uh, for remote monitoring, reducing unplanned downtime, increasing production capacity, et cetera. And we do this uh, with uh, three, uh, I think, distinguishable or uh, differentiating characteristics. One is that we customize the solutions to provide the right solution fit where off-the-shelf solutions really leave clients wanting. Uh, we've seen that a number of times. We also provide connectivity to the devices and the machines where others are not able to do so. We have the people and the expertise to do that. Uh, and lastly, we create open industry standard-based application, or excuse me, solutions uh, using OPC UA, uh, ISA 95, uh, maturity model, et cetera, where off the solution, uh, off the shelf solutions simply create silos of data and reports and uh, sometimes aren't the best solutions. Uh, again, uh, I'm Kevin Jones, CEO of Ectobox, and let's get into it. So, first, we'll talk about downtime. Let's think about unplanned downtime specifically uh, for a machine. Unplanned downtime is the type of uh, uh, time on a machine that is. Uh, down due to circumstances that weren't really planned for ahead of time. This includes time when a machine is unavailable and in good working order, but not running. Well, why is it not running? It really should be. Uh, the machine is not available because uh, it had, for example, maybe a failure uh, and is under repair or uh, on undergoing some significant setup. And these two types of, of downtime, it can be broken out into further smaller categories, but these two high-level types of downtime are some of the biggest killers in production efficiency for manufacturing companies. Uh, the downtime, uh, unplanned downtime specifically, leads to material loss, resource loss, uptime loss, and loss of capacity. And additionally, it reduces a company's ability to deliver their product uh, to their quality standards, which then leads to missing promised delivery dates and, of course, then lost trust with customers, which is not a good thing. In the end, it, what uh, happens is that it all re results in much higher costs and less revenue. Uh, the benefits of tracking downtime uh, are that uh, it will give you really good data to find the root causes of that downtime, especially if you're uh, uh, trying to figure out uh, why a machine uh, isn't doing so well, or if you're actually on a program, a maintenance reliability program called proactive maintenance, where you're looking at the primary causes of failure of a machine. Uh, this will give you really good information about that downtime. Uh, and it will also allow you to make improvements to how the operators are working with the machines, improve the machines themselves, and improve the processes around the machines. Uh, and once you're able to improve the downtime, then you're able to improve production throughput, costs, revenue, margins, all the, the usual things that you know kind of mentioned before. So tracking downtime can have really big benefits. However, it takes a bit of thoughtful work to do that, and that's what we're going to talk about here. So. How do you use this data? Uh, when your machine is producing data, like downtime, uh, how can you use it to improve your production capacity? Uh, how can you use the data to improve scheduling, reduce waste, et cetera? At a very high level, uh, the, obvious, the answer is kind of obvious. You start by collecting the data and converting it to, to useful information, such as downtime charts, Pareto charts, bar charts uh, of downtime by amount of time, by cause, uh, et cetera. Uh, maybe calculate the OEE of the machine if, if things have matured to that point. And then you provide that information as a second step to your team on a tablet, on a computer next to the machine, or even on a big screen TV in the plant. 
now at that point, we're looking at real time da data about your machine, uh, the equipment, states, and events. And you're getting a real view of the capacity performance constraints measured against baselines with downtime. Uh, what's going on with starvation? Where, uh, how much idle time do we have? You know, what are the short stops? And when do they happen? Uh, and when you're looking at the data, machine patterns are actually going to start to reveal themselves over time. And you can gain a new understanding about the actual capacity, the products and materials and throughput. So what's actually going on with the machine? Uh, and again, then you can get the Pareto charts or the bar charts of, of downtime uh, to start uh, actually uh, picking the low-hanging fruit uh, for issues and, and uh, seeing how they uh, uh, can actually be addressed. So uh, at that point, then you'll understand where your actual capacity is and the production is at, and also how machines are actually performing to enable the, cap the production capacity, uh, including the types of downtime. And then, of course, you can uh, use the actual machine data to troubleshoot and, and, and solve those particular issues. Quick case study. Just wanted to mention uh, a situation where uh, data was gathered uh, from a machine, a uh, CNC machine, uh, in fact, and a robot to improve the situation. Uh, so a robot loader was, was, and this is a real situation, a uh, client can't really discuss the client, but you know, uh, a robot loader was, was combined with a, a new CNC machine to run their product unattended, nonstop over a period of eight hours overnight. Uh, but there was a suspicion that there were issues based on the productivity uh, reported about that machine. And so they wanted to drive optimal utilization uh, and uh, understand what was really going on. Really try to improve how the machine was running because what they were planning on doing uh, was to run the machine 24 hours uh, unattended. The, the eight hours overnight uh, was just a test. So what they did was they implemented a real-time data collection uh, uh, solution with a, uh, about 150 points of, of data collected continuously over a 24-hour period. They took that data uh, from the, the data sets and then used a machine learning analysis to detect particular process anomalies with the machine uh, over that particular period of time. Uh, what they found was that the machine would shut down for about six minutes at 2 a.m. every night. And of course, nobody's monitoring the machine, an unattended machine, at 2 a.m. Additionally, they actually found that there were about 20 parts uh, that were lost in production due to poor quality uh, during that period of time. And they found out that it was due to the robot loader in the CNC uh, machine not actually being able to reach the Z-axis position. So they weren't able to physically connect for some particular reason. So over a six-day production run schedule, this would equate to effectively 110 total minutes of, of unplanned downtime while running multiple products on multiple orders. Uh, and pulling the data from the machine for remote monitoring and data analysis helped discover an issue that no, was able to optimize the asset utilization, to optimize how the machine is running, uh, especially as they were moving towards uh, running that machine continuously so over 24 hours. Uh, keep in mind too, some of the, the a lot of the situations aren't just uh, a simple let's gather data for 24 hours, but rather we'll put a machine under constant 24/7 uh, uh, remote monitoring so that we can pull data and watch trends. Uh, and see the, the, the unplanned downtime improve or maybe not improve over time as well. So how do we get that data? Let's talk about getting the data out of the machine. I'll start by quickly reviewing the, the project steps that one should go through for a successful project, and then I'll get into some of the technical details so you can see a little bit of, of how it's done. To start at the highest level, you need to establish the business case. Determine if it actually makes financial sense to solve a certain problem. Once you've done that, and if you've been able to do that, then you need to do the scoping and planning work, which is to say, to pull a, together a lot of details, document those details about the machine, about the situation, about the problems, and then create plans to implement uh, a good, solid, and simple IoT solution. Then at that step, uh, or at the next step is to work on executing a proof of concept project. Uh, which is to say a small project, one machine, a few points of data, nothing terribly complex, uh, and to do it possibly in a test environment. Uh, once that proof of concept project is, is done, and if it's proven successful, then at that point, you can start to implement that solution across the rest of the organization. But let me 
uh, strongly suggest that uh, at that point you shouldn't go live with uh, every other machine there is in your in your your facility. Do that process, do that uh, implementation process incrementally. A couple of machines here, then uh, this particular uh, cell, then another cell, then a group of cells, and you can uh, continually increase uh, the number of machines you're implementing. Uh, the next step is planning and scoping. This is a really, really important step. I'll briefly run through these steps uh, so that we can uh, keep things moving along. Uh, but uh, this is something that we should really talk about if you want to get into a project. Because there's a lot of important details to cover here. The first part is to define the problem to solve. You need to get really specific about what you're trying to solve. Once you've done that, then you need to define the data to pull. Defining the data to pull uh, should be really straightforward. Uh, what one or two pieces of information do you want to pull from the machine to actually solve the problem? You don't need 10 or 20 or 50 values. Uh, if we're looking at downtime of a CNC machine, we might want to try spindle speed. Then the next step is to review the machine, model number, uh, the vendor name, uh, and to find out a lot of details about that machine. There are a lot of details to cover, and again, I would strongly suggest contacting us, and we're ha more than happy to talk to you about all the details that you need to, to pull from the machine. Uh, to understand and have a good successful scoping and, and planning phase here. Uh, but then the next step is to review the network. Uh, um, are the, is the machine connected? What kind of connection is there, et cetera? Then you want to select your platform, your IoT software platform, and potentially your industrial connectivity platform. For us, the choices typically are ThingWorks for IoT software and Kepware for uh, industrial connectivity. Then at that point, once you have all of those details documented, you want to design your solution uh, and as part of the design process uh, creating an architecture document or diagram is really helpful to get a visualization of what the whole solution looks like and then at that point of course after you have the the design you want to create the plan with the schedule the team members who's responsible for what uh, etc uh, the proof of concept during that process uh, you've got to set up the machine with the modules and may need to work with the vendor for that. Set up the network, set up the software, uh, the IoT, uh, software platform, maybe some an industrial connectivity, uh, software like Kepware, uh, connect to the machine with the, uh, uh, with the Kepware software, map the data and then get the data moving out to the IoT software platform and, and implement the solution in, in the IoT software platform. Uh, what we'll do is to go through each of those steps uh, with some screens. They'll be very quick, uh, but hopefully you'll get a good sense of, of the solution and, and how it works. Uh, this is a really basic diagram of the solution that we would uh, set up where the machine, uh, the CNC machine is generating the data. Uh, then we have a small fanless, uh, fanless edge device uh, or a little box uh, with Kepware running on it. Uh, that will then provide our connection into the CNC machine. Uh, Kepware on that box will then connect into it and pull the data from the CNC machine, and we'll need to do some, some data mapping. And then Kepware can actually push the data to our IoT software platform, which would be ThingWorks. And then the IoT software platform will then uh, work with that data, display the data, provide alerts, et cetera. Before we create that whole setup, though, uh, think back to one of the things we needed to look at for the machine. We needed to get a list of the data uh, that is available from that machine and a list of features. Uh, in the technical documentation, typically there's a list of uh, data fields and addresses uh, that you can get from that machine. What data can we pull? And then we look for the, the pieces of data that we need. Uh, once we've done that, uh, then we start the process of uh, connecting to the machine. Uh, we install Kepware uh, and then connect to the machine to uh, uh, using Kepware. And we do that by setting up uh, in Kepware what is called a channel over which to communicate with the device driver. Uh, Kepware has device drivers, has I think maybe about 150 device drivers uh, so that you can communicate over the various protocols that are out there. MT Connect, BACnet, Modbus, et cetera. A lot of CNC machines use MT Connect, so that's what we would use here. Uh, and then uh, you would actually identify the network card uh, to connect to within that machine as well. You then add the device or the machine to connect with, including the IP address, and set up some settings uh, for the data. And then add the specific tags or fields 
uh, data fields with names uh, and addresses in the machine. You want to identify the specific data points in the machine in Kepware that you want to pull data from. We then need to map the data from the CMC machine, those tags or data points, to the data field that we create in Kepware. So to do that, then you open the Quick Connect tool, connect to the machine, uh, select the channel and the device that we've already set up and the tags that have already been established within the uh, machine. And then you add those tags or leaves. Uh, and then with that done, then you test to see if the data is coming through. And you can actually see the data coming through and changing in the value column uh, in the Quick Connect screen uh, as Kepware is pulling the, the, the machine. It's just for test purposes to tell you whether things are, are working or not. Once the connection is running and you can uh, see the data, then you actually have to set up Kepware to push the data directly to a destination such as a database. And that's what we have here in this screen, uh, pushing the data to a SQL Server database. Or you set up another system which would then pull the, the, the data from Kepware. Then we arrive finally at the last step of the process, which is to set up the visualizations or the views of the data in the IoT software platform. Uh, and specifically, we're talking about ThingWorks here. And in this screen, this is a basic setup of, of, of ThingWorks. So in the back end of ThingWorks, we need to set it up to pull data from Kepware, as we talked about, uh, because they work very well together. It's usually a pretty easy process. And then we set up the objects or the, I'm using air quotes here, things in ThingWorks to create the screens or mashups, uh, and then you run the solution you've created. And let me step back a little bit. Uh, things are essentially the digital twin uh, for ThingWorks uh, in this platform, uh, and they give you a lot of flexibility for what you can do within the, the, the software platform. And mashups uh, is a reference to the screens that you can create within ThingWorks to be able to provide whatever visualizations are necessary for, for ThingWorks. Uh, the, the capabilities of the visualization uh, relies uh, entirely on the IoT software port platform that you select. The capabilities of the, the various IoT software platforms uh, that are out there vary greatly, of course. Uh, some are better than, than others. Uh, and the capabilities you're going to get and what you can visualize, how flexible it is, uh, how open the solution is to integrate with other products, et cetera, are, are going to vary greatly. Our choice with ThingWorks is generally a safe one because it has become an industry standard product within the IoT world uh, and provides the capability to provide uh, open solutions, uh, extreme flexibility with visualizations, other features like alerts, and integration with other products. So that's it. That's a wrap. Try to be as quick as possible. Uh, uh, just as a re quick review, Ectobox, uh, we're an IoT solutions company that helps manufacturing companies improve their competitive position by pulling data from machines and devices and connecting that data, converting it to valuable information. And we do this through customizing solutions, providing connectivity with uh, local expertise, and creating open industry standard-based uh, platforms. And uh, also worthwhile uh, noting, we use best-of-breed technology platforms like PCC ThingWorks, Microsoft, Microsoft Azure, uh, et cetera, and we are also an IoT Inc. certified company. Uh, one uh, additional note, uh, as a certified partner of PTC, uh, uh, we have complete access to everything that they have available around the ThingWorks IoT software platform. Uh, and as a platform, they have become a leading product based on research results by well-recognized companies that you can see here on this on this slide. So if you have any questions or concerns, uh, would like to contact us, ask about uh, projects, feel free to, and we'd be happy to talk with you. Thank you very much. Okay, that should be enough.